That reside inside my soul And each one wants to things different How can I love intertwined flames Yet their own bodies lie separate Between the Saifa and Marwa Enchained in a painful moment Hussein calls for him whilst Abbas Cries for the women in the tent Both voices break apart his mind One lies left by is trampled the other's voice never ending forgive me master i failed hussein oh abbas hussein we we've got a day off today as in we haven't got an event we've got three back-to-back -back events thursday friday saturday so today's wednesday we've got, we've got a day off we're not doing anything we're chilling so we thought as a recreational activity when in America, what do you do? When in America, bang, bang, we're going to a gun range, we're shooting some guns. Yeah, just let go though, next time, just let it go. Okay, now get your stance. Lean, kick your hips back and lean in, there you go. Drop that, bend that front knee a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Lean in. And now when you put that red dot right where you want it, safety off. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this targeting system, right, how to operate. This little button right here. That's it, now you got five rounds in there. I can aim with the bullets, I can't aim with the gun. Yeah. <laughs> Trigger, when you pick it up. Got one more. Oh, 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 oh. It'll stay. It'll stay back. That was awesome. That was sick. An hour and a half of shooting guns, rifles, snipers, uh, AKs. Madness. That was insane. Uh, that was insane. You can't come to America and not shoot a gun. So, thankfully, we did it. It was good. It was hard getting here, but we got here in the end and. Finally went to a gun range, spent how much? About 70, 70 bucks each, about 40 quid, 35, 40 quid. Had a good time. I wouldn't do it again, but it was one of those fun. So after the Ummah convention, the tour, like a real tour, that's when it started, the, the real road trip. Uh, a couple of friends who, who volunteered their time and volunteered their, their resources um, told us that we can use his car. Of course, he accompanied us. Uh, and we went on a road trip from um, Dearborn, Michigan, all the way to uh, Brampton, Toronto. Um, it took us about four or five hours, but it was very much an enjoyable trip. We, you know, we exchanged ideas, we exchanged opinions, we laughed, we joked, and um, it, it was a very, very good experience to be among such good friends. Um, we traveled to Toronto, we arrived in Toronto. Uh, at Toronto we stayed at a friend's house who is a very hospitable man and uh, we, uh, you know, we're very much indebted to him. He opened up his house for about six guys. He almost saw us as, as family and he really, you know, he took us in, he looked after us, he, he fed us and, uh, and gave us the accommodation. So that was, the, the journey was very, very smooth getting to Toronto. The actual program itself um, was a, an, in a sense a normal program. A normal program, there was a, a you know, Quran, there was lecture, uh, poetry, and then an Ashid uh, to celebrate the Mab'ath of the Prophet. What's very interesting is when I got there, um, some kids came up to me and said, Salam, how are you doing? And one of them gave me a letter and said to me, uh, Salam, Mullah Ali, I heard that you got married. And it's in, in the most kiddie handwriting. Uh, and even with a picture of a ring and, and, and I think a, a little man and a, a woman with a hijab. He said, Assalamu alaikum, I think I, I, I heard that you got married from Facebook. 
uh, I just want to say congratulations. But spelling mistakes all over the all, all over the place, but still, it's it's so heartwarming to see this. Um, you know, congratulations on your marriage and wish you all the best and stuff. Um, so that was one thing that happened before the, before the actual event. So again, I was really comfortable. It was a, it was a very warm atmosphere, I would say. Um, nothing too energetic, nothing too exciting, nothing too electrifying. It was a warm, subtle recitations, people, you know, reciting along with you. Yeah, it was a very warm program, I would say. Now, whilst I was listening to the lecture, some kid came up and sat next to me and uh, he had this notepad and a, and a pen in his hand. So I thought he was going to be talking to me about, uh, or he'd want me, for example, to write some motivational quotes or, or, or a motivational message. He then wrote um, a question. And he, and, he, and he just, you know, he just slided it next to me as if he was in a lesson and he didn't want the teacher to see. So he slided the, 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 the notepad next to me and the pen. And then uh, the question was, um, uh, you know, Salam, uh, um, will you ever move to Toronto? And if yes, will he be my neighbor? And at this moment, I just wanted to eat the guy up because as of how cute he was. He was about five, six years old. So, I mean, I would love to move to Toronto, but obviously I, I, I said I would love to move to Toronto. And for the question that, you know, would you be my neighbor? I said, yes, of course, uh, I'd be your neighbor. And then he, the questions went back and forth. I mean, no disrespect to the lecturer, but this was very interesting for me because it never happened to me before. So uh, uh, the questions just went back and forth, you know, uh, um, how do you make up, you know, tunes for your recitations and, and um, you know, what inspired you for poetry? So I'm just sitting there writing essays for this kid um, whilst the lecture was going on. And then, um, so that was something which was very interesting in that program. <laughs> So we finished from um, Toronto Bram Brampton, we went uh, back to the house, we socialized, we, we sat down and we talked in depth with um, the, uh, the host. From Brampton we returned back to Dearborn, so imagine how tired we are, this is, this is five hour drive to, to Toronto, finished the, uh, the, the program, the day after, came back to Dearborn, stayed there a night, and then we went to Chicago. Chicago, um, there we were conducting workshops. So a full, you know, one, one hour, one hour and a half of, of, of workshops in which I can really get across what I really want to say and what, what lessons I want to give to the people. Chicago's traffic. So, alaikum everyone. My name is Rizwan, and we're here today at Masum Imam Barga. It stands for the Midwest Association of Shia Organized Muslims. It's a masjid and Imam Barga in Chicago. It feeds off a lot of the Chicago communities, and one of the recent initiatives is to have a lot more English programs. For that reason, we brought in um, brothers Ali Fadl and Nuri Sardar to have a poetry workshop and to have a poetry jeshan at the end of the night. Um, this was part of the program where we want to have more youth involvement. And because we saw a very you know, dire need for the youth to be more actively involved in the masjids, we decided to take an English approach and to have more programs that are catered towards the English language. And since brothers Ali and brothers Nuri are very popular for having a lot of initiatives in English, they have nasheeds, they have poetry, they have many different programs, we decided it would be a great opportunity to have them here at Masum. So recently we in, um, invited a couple speakers um, who are both national and local. Um, we have a couple of the speakers lined up and we want to have the youth more engaged by having speakers that can directly relate to them, especially the different youth issues that are prevalent amongst you know, college students, high school students, elementary students, all of them. Tonight we have a Laisal Midas program and for this program we have a poetry workshop. This will be led by brothers Ali Fadl and Nuri Sardar. These names, you know, they're famous pretty much everywhere you go and they've done a lot of different programs. They have a lot of different TV, um, you know, guest appearances that they've done. 
and their primary purpose today is to have the youth be more open to this field of poetry and how poetry is very relevant in modern Islam today. Oftentimes, we're just used to the Urdu poetry, Arabic poetry that we see, and not many youth can understand that. There's a huge language barrier. So to have Brother Sardar and Brother Swadil today, we want to have the youth more engaged in poetry to see how we can relate these back to the youth's lives and how, inshallah, they can also participate in poetry in the masjids. So poetry has a long-standing, you know, place in Islamic history. When the Prophet ﷺ entered Medina, we had the youth of Medina um, singing for the Prophet. Um, throughout the time, especially after the incident of Karbala, we had many, the Imams emphasize poetry. They had them emphasize lam lamentations. And the poetry is a lot more powerful than lectures oftentimes because it's a lot more eloquent. It has a lot more you know, symbolism and metaphors behind it. So the reason why this is important for the youth today is because by engaging their creative talents and to bring out their you know, inner feelings that they have that they just can't express through simple lectures, but expressing that through poetry can you know, really give a different side to different Islamic history. So inshallah in the Chicago land, we'll be having a poetry um, slam after the month of Ramadan. And in order for the youth to be you know, more welcome to this initiative, this program is a great prelude. This will allow them to engage their creative talents. It'll allow them you know, to have some exposure to very world-renowned poets. And inshallah, they can have some inspiration. So we arrived there and this is, we left like nine o'clock in the morning or, or something like that time. Um, when we arrived there, about, it took us about five or six hours to get there. When we did arrive there, it were, uh, we were exhausted and really, really tired. But then again, we, you know, we were focused, we had our, we had our, uh, our aims and we had our, uh, our vision, so we, we conducted the workshop. Um, what I did personally was I put them in a circle, put them all in a circle. There were some chairs lying around, so I told them, listen, get your chairs and come down, come in a circle. I sat in the middle, but um, I told them, listen, this is going to be a very interactive discussion, so I want you all to, to participate. So I, I entered the discussions between, uh, I, the, I entered the discussion uh, of spreading the message of Islam and commemorating the message of Islam and the difference between the two. So it was very interesting. And at that time, it was very interesting to see that there was a Christian man sitting in that audience there and there. A Christian man who sat there and he was taking in everything that we're saying about spreading the message and commemorating the message. Um, a lot of interesting uh, opinions and comments went back and forth. And then the man just said, can I just say something? He was very Arab, he had a very Arab accent. Can I say something? And we said, yes, go ahead. He said, I'm a Christian man uh, Syrian and I live here in, in, in Chicago. He said what's interesting about Islam is that from the inside it's a beautiful religion, an absolutely beautiful religion and, and something which I adore. But from the outside what's painted to us as Christians, what's painted to us as non-Muslims, it's a really corrupt religion, a religion full of hate, violence and terrorism. That is exactly how it's painted to us. So he urged us as the youth to go out and speak to the people and tell them this is our Islam. This is what Islam means to us. This is what our Islam is. It's a religion of peace, of love, of prosperity, of justice. And it's not a religion of hate and terrorism and corruption. And he told us the reason why we're getting all of this negative media is because you, the youth, aren't going out and spreading this message. So then we enter the discussion of how to spread the message of Islam to the non-Muslims and the fact that we have to communicate in their language rather than communicate in our language. And I think that was a very, very, very important discussion we had uh, amongst the youth there. We finished the workshops, went to pray, went to eat, came back, and then the celebration started. So again, it was the Mabath of the Prophet or, or just around there, uh, lecturer, Poet, and then I came up and did my citations. It's the greatest book, his tale, the greatest tale of Muhammad. 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 God raised him up through the heavens to show his status. During this time, after the focus of the workshops and the seven hours of driving and the dietary requirements needed for recitations, for example, I would stay away from uh, any fizzy drinks, any orange juice, any concentrated fluids, uh, any spicy food. So at that time, I would only drink some warm water and um, just something light to eat because I didn't want to ruin my voice. But at that time, I was very tired, very exhausted, but I gave it um, my 100% uh, of my efforts. But the interesting thing here is because each event has its own flavor. Um, so, for example, Toronto, it was a very warm, elderly kind of community, um, very mature. Ummah, 
electrifying atmosphere, you know, there was uh, vigor and in, 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 invigoration and, 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 and inspiration from all sides. It's, it's really, you know, it's a really electrifying time that we had. Anyway, so those two. Then we came to Chicago. Chicago was more strategic because we had the first workshops. We had the workshops before the before prayer. During the workshops, the message that I wanted to give out was there's a, a direct distinction between spreading the message of Islam and commemorating the message of Islam. And I had to use my own words for the recitation. What do I mean? The community there were predominantly uh, Urdu speaking. And obviously I didn't know Urdu and I couldn't speak Arabic. So I had to communicate to the elders and to the youth through English. Because sometimes what I do is I would use recitations in Arabic just to get the flow of Arabic poetry there because sometimes Arabic poetry is very attractive to listen to even though people don't understand. But for this one I had to focus only on English, only on English recitations and try to encapsulate their minds with English poetry. And I think it was quite successful but um, again I was very exhausted, very tired. At the end of it I was really tired, I just wanted to go get back to Dearborn. Became my pupil, therefore my eye just sees. Ali beautified my sight, reminding me that he's Ali. Ali told me to recall him, and so death freeze. Ali, Ali's beauties in my eye daily studies. Ali, Ali can only be known by saying. So we finished from the program Chicago. We drove back all the way um, to Dearborn, another five-hour drive. But the thing is, there was an hour difference because. Dearborn and Chicago is an hour difference. So going there, we had an hour on our side. Going back, we had an hour against us. So what would be a five hour journey actually took six hours, technically. So we arrived around 6 a.m. But before that, 6 a.m. is sunrise. On the way, uh, it's a direct motorway. And we just noticed that there was suddenly, there was a bit of a stream of line of light. And then it dawned on us, excuse the pun, it dawned on us that it was uh, Fedra time. Where do you go? You go to a service station. Went to the service station, did our wudu. At this time, it's, it's quite cold. So shivering, trying to find a place to do wudu. The, the grass is wet because uh, of uh, the morning mist. Um, the ground is hard, stones everywhere. How do I pray? Um, took a leaf, put it on the floor. Allahu Akbar prayed. But it was such a, it was a meaningful prayer. Let's just say, it was a very meaningful way because we meant to stop. We did our wudu, every, all the brothers were tired, but you know, you had to wake up uh, in the middle of nowhere, literally. Um, did our prayers, prayed to our Lord, go back in the car and then straight back to, 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 to Dearborn. Literally threw myself onto the bed to sleep as soon as I can because of the fact that we had a flight at 12 or 1, 1 p.m. that same day. So I arrived at 7 a.m., slept, Woke up at 10, uh, woke up at 11, so about a three hour drive, a three hour uh, sleep, although I haven't slept the whole, whole, the whole night. On the way to De Dearborn, by the way, on the way to Dearborn from Chicago, I didn't sleep. I had discussions with friends and stuff, so I couldn't sleep. Um, got to Dearborn, slept three, four hours, and then it was a, a rush, a panic, just to get to the, to, to, the, um, to the airport. Reached the airport, alhamdulillah, safe and sound. Then it was time for the goodbyes, because we spent a good week or so with these dear friends of ours. Who, would, who traveled with us to Toronto and back to Dearborn, Chicago and back to Dearborn. And then it was time to say our goodbyes. So we said our goodbyes, you know, we said our, we said our regards, our du'as and everything. And then we headed, all, uh, we headed towards Orlando. Orlando is another chapter. So currently we are in the Detroit airport after finishing a grueling, grueling journey to uh, Chicago, about a five hour drive um, from, from Michigan to, to Chicago. To be honest with you, it was, we traveled by car from Michigan to, to, to Chicago. It was quite fun on the way because there's many, um, uh, you know, we, we went as a group and it was a seven seated car. so. Quite fun on the way, loads of discussions, loads of um, laughter, and, and, and a really joyous uh, occasion because you know all of the, all of all of the, uh, the, the the guys that were with us really connected with each other. We, with each other, we had good banter, we had good jokes. So that was the sort of the first leg of our journey where we're within the Deer Dearborn was our hub. We used to travel to to travel to Toronto and we came back and we traveled to Chicago and came back. But now we're actually getting a flight and heading to somewhere else, and that's in Orlando.
So after about six hours transit, on and off a plane, on and off a plane again, arrived in Orlando, night time, um, went to our, the place, the, the place we were staying and we prepared for the conference the next day. We literally arrived around 7, 8, 9 p.m. and the conference was at 8 p.m., uh, 8 a.m. the next day. Didn't have much time to prepare and we were quite exhausted, actually quite knackered because uh, we've hardly slept, we've only slept for two, three hours in the afternoon, in, in the morning before, because uh, we arrived from Chicago, 7 a.m., slept for three hours, Orlando plane, couldn't sleep much. Anyway, we were knackered, we were exhausted. So here we uh, went to the conference. The conference uh, was organized by HIC. Now I, I sat back and, and, and waited for my turn. So it's good that I stayed back and I waited for my turn because then I could really analyze the crowd and to see their interaction with the reciter. Now unfortunately, um, there wasn't much vigor in them. There wasn't much energy. Maybe perhaps they woke up early or it's just their culture, but they weren't really interested in really participating with the reciter. At first, it was still very timid. It was still very subtle, still very shy, anxious, a bit awkward. But the key here is to have a reply or a, recit or, or, or a recitation from them, which is very short and simple. Mine was simply the name of Imam Al -Salam. And that way, I can get them just to reply just by, the, by, just by reciting the name of Ali Salam. It wasn't like a long recitation they had to learn or anything like that. No, just simply the name of Imam Ali Salam. And that seemed to work because they could shout the name Ali without any shyness or awkwardness because it's not... Um, you see, again, the key thing here um, is because, because English recitation is quite new, for them to start reciting in English it's a bit awkward for them. Now for me, I'm used to it. I can, you know, I don't mind reciting in English. I don't feel funny about it. I don't feel awkward. But for some people, it's like, well, hold on, this is an Urdu tune or this is an Arabic tune. So it feels a bit weird to, to start reciting in English. You know what I mean? Um, so then and there on, it was quite successful because I was getting a good participation, good enough for uh, that community, good enough for that community. Um, to get a good participation from them. So I was, at the end of that, I was quite happy, uh, especially with the interaction that I got from the audience. I finished that day, and then at that night, we were invited at one of the brothers who was attending the conference um, to, to a, a quite a large gathering in which we, uh, again, shared experiences, shared uh, opinions, and when we talked um, throughout the night, even though we, we were quite tired and we had a flight, this is the key point here, we had a flight at 7 a.m. And this is where it really got tiring and exhausting for us. We had a flight at 7 a.m. We have to be at the airport at 5. We slept at 4, 3.30, one hour and a half sleep. And we know that we have a program that same day, as in 1 p.m. that day, or 2 p.m. that day, in New Jersey. And this is not just a normal program, this is the party in the park program, which we have to give 125% for. So one hour sleep, then rushing to the airport. There was a bit of delays with the bags and, and, and two different airlines and half of us were on one airline, half of us were on another one. So after all the rushing and panicking and rushing and panicking, eventually we got on the plane. Three of us were on one plane, two of us were on another plane. Eventually we arrived, more or less the same time. And then uh, we had to go to the program. Now, I'm naked, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, I'm hungry, my throat is dry, uh, lack of sleep. All of these is elements of bad preparation for recitations. Very bad preparation for recitations. And I was ticking the box of each, of, each and every one of them. So for me, it was do or die moment. I, I, I just had to give everything that I could. So, off we go to picnic in the park. I'm actually going to give it a go at Urdu today. Just a couple of lines because there are, there's a lot of 
of um, uh, people from the indo pakistan community attending the program. So hopefully this will um, uh, entice them to be inspired, let's just say. Assalamu alaikum, 1st of June, Sunday, New Jersey, picnic in the park. Um, it's interesting to see how this one works out actually, because it's very different, we haven't had anything like this before. Massive park in New Jersey, they're doing a Mawlood program. Uh, called picnic in the park, Sunday, nice sunny day, all the communities coming together, all the Pakistani Khajas, Arabs are coming together to unite in this program. So let's wait and see, inshallah it goes well. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Ali Sina. I'm with uh, Muhammadiya English Organization. I'm an organizer. Uh, we try to bring Islam with the youth in North Jersey. Uh, basically, what we do is we hold events, not per se just lectures and nasheeds per se. We like to make it more active for them. We want to introduce a fun environment, let them know that Islam is just not during Maharam. It's carried out throughout the year, that we have a beautiful religion. There's so many birthdays to celebrate that this is our goal, that we want to present to them and let them know that, you know what, Islam is fun and we want them to be a part of it. Uh, some events that we've done, uh, we've held uh, events at a hall for um, Prophet's birthday. We've done that, an event like that where we had the kids uh, come in. We had some couple of activities, arts and crafts, uh, had different type of variations of games. Uh, we also do basketball events like basketball tournaments. Uh, we do that as well with the Muslim youth and our organization, the community. That's what we try to do is not only the youth, but we try to get the adults involved as well. So the event that we had at the park is the Shaban poetry picnic uh, to celebrate the birth of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. So what we did is uh, us and uh, Rising Cries, staying, uh, Stand With Dignity, uh, we got together and we worked on bringing a uh, beautiful Nasheed artist, Ali Fadil, uh, poet, poetry by Nuri Sadat, and activities with Ali Najaf. Our goal was to also, <clears throat> like I said earlier, make it fun for the youth, make it fun for the adults. We brought two communities together. This was actually the first time that an Afghan community and a Pakistani and a Arabic community got together to work on one event. Uh, it was a successful event. <clears throat> got plenty of good feedback. The uh, activities was fun. Uh, we had uh, poetry and the sheets and many great things that went on in the event. To have events outside of a center, a mosque, or anything like that, in a park per se, uh, it, it's more freedom. It, uh, it brings creativity. Uh, people enjoy themselves better. Uh, the wide range, uh, there's so many things to do. It's something different uh, versus a mosque. It's, it's beautiful at a mosque or any center, of course, but at a park is something different. Uh, people can uh, get together, talk, they can interact with one another, and it's just a beautiful way to spread Islam as it should be. Arrived at picnic in the park, immediately I could hear the voice of a speaker speaking about Islamic issues. Explaining, did you understand it? And then what on the side? What? The inside saying, let me see if I can pay attention oh, really? more to these But I, I couldn't see where it was from, and it was quite very interesting to, and it was quite an experience for me because. If I go to a normal park and suddenly you're hearing, and the Prophet said this, and Imam Ali said this, and Imam Hussein said this, it's like, where, where, where is this coming from? 
it was a bit of a hill, you go up the hill, you come down a bit, and then you see a massive stage, people, hijab, brothers and sisters, all together, eating and, then, uh, and, and listening to a, a, a lecture. And at the same time, you have non-Muslims walking around in skateboards and, and flying kites and by the lake and, and eating and enjoying themselves. So it was a very, very unique experience for us because, number one, I've never been in such an event. And number two, it was an event that was very much needed, very much forward thinking, very much modern. And it's, it's exactly what we mean by spreading the message of Islam. You, instead of making the programs inside the mosques where it's in your own bubble, it's secluded, uh, people are, people are uh, not very interested to come, you have, you have it out in the open, out in the park. People can just sit there and listening. I saw people just sit there listening and, and, and whilst they were walking past, what was going on here? And you hear the name of Hussein. You hear the name of Abbas alayhi salam. You hear the name of Ali alayhi salam. Very great experience. The organizers of this event, um, they targeted different communities and different backgrounds. So you had Iraqi people there. You had, um, I had Syrian people there. You had obviously the Urdu speaking Pakistani people there. You had Khajas there. And you had Afghanis there. So different backgrounds, different cultures, and different languages. But first and, for, first and foremost, we as the speakers, we thought we have to do something different here. We don't want to just get up on stage, Assalamu alaikum, I'm Ali Fadl and, and I'm going to recite for you. And we really wanted to encapsulate the minds of the youth and really take them on board. Because they were a bit scattered. Some of them were playing soccer, some of them were playing football, some of them were playing, you know, throwing balls, uh, throwing footballs uh, to each other. Um, not really interested in what's going on around the stage. So we thought, let's hold on, let's consolidate what we have, bring them all together, and then we can start with the recitations. So we told Brother Nori to get up on stage and try to be as boring as possible. So start with a long introduction and say, you know, thank you very much, we are here. Uh, very long-winded. Just be as long and boring as possible. As soon as he started his poetry, literally first two lines, we came and walked uh, and interrupted him. Once we interrupted him, we told him, listen, Nori, I, we, we kind of don't feel the vibe from the youth. And this is totally off the hook. We only organized this about five minutes before we went up. So I told Brother Nori, listen, I, I just, I can't connect with the youth here. I, I, there's, there's no interaction here. I can't, number one, I can't see them. I don't know where they are. Number two, there's no positive vibes from the audience. We need some positive vibes. I, I trust you, you trust me. We have a connection here. And you know, I, I take a bullet for you, bro. I, I, I'd do anything for you. And I said to him, you know what, I've decided. I will jump in one minute's time. What do you mean you're gonna jump? I will jump in one minute's time. Are you serious? Unless, or I need, let's just say, all of the guys here to catch me. If there's someone there to catch me, by all means, great. If there's no one there, then I'll fall and break my knees. Whatever happens, I am not going to back down from this. I'm gonna jump from the stage, and we're talking about a good meter and a half here. I'm gonna jump from the stage in one minute's time. Time it. At first, people thinking, what's going on? You know, the reciters are now deciding to jump off stage. As in, uh, people were confused, people, it, was, it was very tense. One person broke that tension and he came and walked and stood right there. And another person came, and another person came, and suddenly we had a whole crowd of youth, of all guys, just standing there and waiting for me to jump. So once I got the, the trust of the people, once I got that connection, I jumped. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, woo! That is when I knew we had the crowd in our hands. We had the crowd, we had the minds of the crowd, we had the focus of the crowd. Something different, something totally off the hook. Uh, but Ali Fazl, please don't do that again. This is not Canada. We don't have free health insurance, so we don't know how to cover that. So then we started with the motivational uh, workshop workshops. Um, it was again audience participation. We brought them on stage. We had to do some exercises with them, and then came the recitations. Now, for me personally, I knew there was different backgrounds, and I knew there was Urdu speaking people, and I knew there was Iranian speaking uh, speaking people as well, Persian speaking, Farsi speaking. And I knew there was fastest speaking people. So what I did was, I prepared an Urdu, uh, a couple of lines of Urdu poetry. And I came up, I did one English recitation, and then bam, I hit them with an Urdu recitation. People were, were taken aback. It's like, whoa, this is, this is Urdu. Again, 
This is all to do with grabbing the minds of the audience and really interacting with them. Once I finished with my little segment before the poet, I went back and someone came and told me, um, you've done Urdu, but now you need to do Iranian. I'm stuck here. I don't know where to get Iranian poetry from. Number one, I don't want to say something which might be wrong because uh, I don't understand what I'm saying. I, I might have delivered it in a way which um, could be wrong and I could be saying something which is detrimentally wrong. Blasphemy, for who knows. So I sat there on the side thinking, what do I do? A friend of mine had a phone. I told him, give me your phone. I need to go on YouTube. Went on YouTube and there was a reciter who uh, would recite Iranian and Arabic regarding Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So I listened to it and I wrote it down. But with this one, I, I, I knew what the words were saying and I, I've heard it many, many times. So I knew how to pronounce the words as well. Um, again, so I went up on stage. This is my last segment. This is where I really need to get them on now. I recited my English, then I gave them the Iranian. Again, the, very much the uh, audience participated with me. And then I, I told them to clap. At this stage, every, anything, I, I, you know, you could expect anything to happen. At this stage, I'm in the middle of my recitations. I turn around and I see two of the brothers taking selfies of the audience and me at the same time. So again, it was a very, very enjoyable experience. The cry we were taught to learn. Mashallah, the cry we were taught to learn. Mehdi, 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 Mehdi. Assalamu alaikum, uh, my name is Imran Ali Fayazi. I am 17 and uh, a pre-med student, uh, currently enrolled for uh, Rutgers University. Uh, the event today was uh, slightly like speeches, but more poetry and in English, and we have like a large amalgamation of uh, you know many communities coming together for the uh, birth of Imam Hussain. Um, I actually found the English poetry to be very uh, refreshing in a sense because uh, where I come from, or so, uh, in Middlesex, New Jersey, uh, uh, there's a lot of poetry that goes on, but a lot of it occurs in Urdu. And for the younger generation growing up in America, I know I struggle with this myself, but to learn Urdu to the level at which poetry is written is very difficult. But it's good that the youth got a, a chance to experience some like high-level poetry. Uh, in English, so they could also understand and feel the weight of uh, you know what the rest of us feel when we hear the name Hussein. I think I find it very important to uh, you know use as many means as possible to you know relay the message of Imam Hussein and the Ahl al-Bayt. And you know poetry is a very uh, good means of doing such such things because it doesn't take many words to display the uh, the conversation or what we're trying to get across to the youth. And as a youth myself, you know, I'm only 17, so I, I know that like long-winded things kind of bore me, I'll be honest, uh, but you know, the poetry, it captures your attention and I've actually never experienced that kind of poetry. It's, it's very refreshing, as I said again, because it's something different to step, to step outside of the zone that what you're normally used to. It, it's very nice and to know that, you know, there are different versions and ways of expressing the same thing that, you know, uh, the rest of us feel, like all of us feel for the, the same person. From my experience, I would, I'm gonna keep it short. I'm just gonna say that Take what you love and take who you love, Imam Hussein and the El Bayt, and find the medium because when you find that medium is when you'll really experience a true passion for what you have. Now we've finished the recitations, the program, everything is finished on stage, people are clearing up. But I promised a couple of youth earlier in the day that we would play football with them, we played soccer. Um, and I really couldn't let them down because they came up to me again and said, you know, Brother Ali, shall we make teams, shall we play? And I, I, at this time, I really want to go home because I'm, I'm knackered now. I'm living off, I'm living, living, literally living off one hour, maybe two hours of sleep in about 30, 30 hours. Um, I looked at him, but the lure of football, I couldn't say no to. And I'm really attracted to football and I love that sport. So I told them, okay, make the teams, I'll be there in a second. Um, so we played and I, and I played for about an hour and the kids were loving it. We were giving them the motivation, giving them um, uh, the skills maybe to even play football. Uh, and it was a very much enjoyable experience. It was even teams, even scores. You know, it was only the last minute that someone scored, well, we scored and, and my team won, um, which again, a very enjoyable experience. You know, there was handshaking going all around. Very much a program in which when a kid goes back home, he would definitely say to himself, I've been inspired.
When that kid goes home, he'll say, I am motivated, I'm inspired, and I love the religion that I'm in now. And not only that, I'm, I, I, wanna, I want everyone to know why I love this religion, and I want everyone to love this religion too. These are the words written in tears, left them to you, paint an image. One job of guns to kill Bella, which body does he first visit? Words that reside inside my soul And each one wants to things different How can I love intertwined flames Yet their own bodies lie separate Between the Saifa and Marwa Enchained in a painful moment Hussein calls for him whilst Abbas Cries for the women in the tent Both voices break apart his mind What lies left by is trampled the other's voice never ending forgive me master i failed Hussein. Oh.